Hi, everyone, and welcome to the first episode of the Pump It Up podcast, a show where Crane Pumps and Systems talks about the wastewater industry and modern manufacturing. The goal of these podcasts are for you to get to know us at CPNS and hopefully more about the pump industry. I'm your host, Elizabeth, and today we'll be talking with Rohan Das, a project engineering manager here at CPNS and one of the main brains behind the MV3 pump family. Hi, Rohan. How are you doing? Hi, Elizabeth. I'm doing great. How about you? I'm doing well. I just want to thank you for joining us on our, our as our first guest. Thank you. We really appreciate you taking the time to sit down and talk with us. Um, my first question for you today is, can you tell us a little bit about your background? Sure. Uh, like you said, I mean, right now I'm the project engineering manager in the engineering department. I primarily work on new product development. Uh, and then uh, been with Crane now for over seven years. Uh, joined way back uh, in 2015 after completing my master's in engineering as an application engineer, uh, then moved as a project engineer, manager, and so on. Uh, even before this, uh, I did work uh, for an engineering consultant, uh, designing systems, uh, turbo machines, and uh, then after that, it's been all products. Okay, great. What is your connection to the MV3 family? Uh, it's, I mean, I'm, you can call me, I was the first recruit on the, on this project. So I started as the project engineer, uh, back then we were two of us starting this project. And as, as the project started taking shape, there was been more team members joining in and now it's a big platform. And right now I'm the project manager for the NV program. How many people are on your team? Across uh, various departments, there are around 22 people now working for this project. Oh, wow. That's grown significantly from the, the two people that it started with. <laughs> yes. Why does CPNS develop this product? Honestly, I would say a voice of customer. Uh, this is this is a tool we uh, at Crane, just to, not just Crane Pumps, but across Crane uh, use uh, very frequently, and we really pay attention to it. Uh, every month, we have our NPD program where really anybody can submit an ideation or a request for some new product or, you know, adding a feature to the product. So, I mean, our current, or if I may say, which was our previous SH platform, which was a submersible unit, was pretty successful and over a decade, we have really grown market share with that product line. And based on that, our customers really wanted now a similar product, uh, which can also run dry. That's where it all started. And that's why we made NV, uh, which is really a premium efficient air fill submersible pump and run dry, submerged. You can uh, run it vertical, horizontal, using all the various accessories we offer. And uh, in any any wastewater environment, you can run this product. Wow, that, that's amazing. Um, could you talk a little bit about the, the process on um, what you have to consider when determining the feasibility of this project as well as um, any other project when it comes to the new product development process? Yeah, I mean, uh, again, I think we've been pretty blessed uh, with uh, this at Crane. We have a really robust uh, seven-stage NPD process that we follow. Uh, and one of the key things that happens, say, at stage uh, one and two is when any new project or product request comes in, we the first thing we try to do is really define the product and the features uh, you're looking for. Uh, then uh, the next step is really uh, go out and verify if there is truly a business need. What, what I'm trying to say here is this just a one-off or it's really there is a need for a product. Uh, and then the next step is really at stage two and three of the NPD process, we really try to understand the tech and commercial feasibility of the product. We 
start with the technical aspect, just, you know, basic designs, PMAS to understand, can we technically achieve the product? What our front end or whoever is requesting for. And then if, if it's a product commercially viable, right, is it going to generate profit? Is it going to generate value to your customers? So these are the basic steps we review before uh, confirming if a project is feasible. Okay. And you said that there are seven steps in that process? Uh, yes. Okay. And that, that development happens in the first two? Uh, I would stage one is really ideation and a quick check if a product, you know, if basically you really think if you'd want to do it or not. Yeah. Two, stage two is where you really get into the weeds a little more. Uh, and then at stage three, you really start uh, working on the product and the CDR, the commercial aspects and everything. Okay. And as far as testing, um, what stage does, does testing start to happen at? Testing really starts at stage four, right? Uh, stage four is pretty much heavy engineering. Uh, that's where you get into the detailed designing. The first thing we do uh, after our designs are done, initial designs are done, we, we, we really do the design themas, just trying to understand what can go wrong and also what kind of qualification testing. And that's where all the detailed test program is laid out that is really required to Number one, qualify the product to any protocol. Uh, for example, we do CSA, uh, uh, you can do FM, what, what do you need? Based on that, you design the test and then what are the risks? Testing is all about risk mitigation, right? You want to minimize the risk before putting something out there in the field. You want to put something which is safe, uh, robust, and that's how you develop that. That's the approach yeah. uh, you take uh, moving towards a test program. And are there other specific tests that go into testing the, the functionality and the safety of the Envy specifically that's changed from the other oil-filled versions that CPNS has done previously? Uh, I wouldn't say really we, we haven't changed anything. We have, we have done a lot of these tests even with our previous product. But what we have really changed with with this NV, uh, with all this NVD processes, uh, the, the stringent test we have added. So, for example, we, we are doing something called the HALT test, the highly axial. We pretty much take our units and uh, run it in a three axis uh, vibration table, which is typically used for aerospace equipment, small equipment, electronic. But what we are trying to feel is what breaks first. So, okay. something really different then we have a very robust uh, field test program uh, which is what a minimum six to 12 months we at a minimum we run six then we monitor it for 12 months uh, before we launch any product into the market i mean to be honest for me personally i believe that although all the different tests we do are actually in much more stringent condition but I think the field test is very unique because every site or every beta site provides you with a very uh, unique condition, climate, elevation, temperature, people running, different people use equipment differently. So when you bring all those uh, various element uh, and, and add to the product, that's where you really know how, and monitoring really the other people is, we use uh, monitoring uh, using our systems, and we every day we take data and we review everything at the end of the week, every week through 12 months mm -hmm. to understand if there is something going wrong or what can we learn because it's a, it's a continuous learning process. So that's what we have done, and I think that's one of the reasons we are being very successful with the NP program. Yeah, definitely. As far as the, the beta program in general, um, do you have specific sites that you send those to or do you have or do you try to diversify who gets those kind of um, testing pumps? Yeah, I mean, uh, what we typically do is we based as as I said, DVP, yeah, we based off our test program, we, we identify what are we trying to test, right? Say I have a, for example, 
I might have a worry with uh, the heat. It's getting hot. So I would try to put it at the environment, say, in Arizona, right, where you know your amp. Uh, you're going to try and put it somewhere where it runs a lot of hours per day. Uh, you might have an issue. You might you might be trying to test a uh, sh uh, shaft, right? If it's robust enough, so you might try to put it on an application which is horizontal, high radial load, things like that. So first, we try to understand what I'm trying to test, and then I try to lay out where I would like to test. Then our front-end team kinds of typically goes out to our various distributors across the country and identify such sites, and they all submit. We have a, a, a sheet that our distributors fill it out with all the details we need. Then we, we review those uh, requests and really try to... Unfortunately, you cannot always get exactly what you want. Uh, that's the reality of the field. But based on what we get, we really try to find the best and the hardest possible because this is an opportunity for, for the engineering team to really test and figure it out or any issues out there before we put the field and put the unit actually as a as a production unit. So that's where I want to find out the hardest application and the most unique. And we also try to um, uh, change the sites, right? I, if one site I'm trying to focus on heat, the other side I want to focus on the loads. Mm -hmm. So that's how we pick these various sites to start with. Yeah, that's a, it's a fantastic program that I know CPNS really prides themselves on um, is that beta program. Um, I know you mentioned um, that the MV3 in general is um, a, a redesign and a revamp of the oil filled scythe and SH product lines by just upgrading the motor. Um, how do you determine when you should redesign an existing product versus completely designing a new one? Uh, that's a, a hard one, I would say. I mean, to be honest, there's no one thing, right? There are various factors uh, that we really need to evaluate. Uh, you know, one easy one I can tell you right now is typically uh, you would like to say, go and want to redesign, uh, sorry, um, upgrade because your time to market is less, right? Than completely redesigning and qualifying a product. It takes more time. You know, for example, right, in you know your your sales team might say, hey, I, I need to improve my hydraulic efficiency on this particular hydraulic by 10 points. Most likely that will be uh, basically a upgrade or a redesign if you want to call it, right? Because you can probably most likely change the internal geometry, right, of the hydraulic and, and get that efficiency with the new tool. However, you know, when you think of NV, just if I if I exclude the hydraulic portion and really look at the driver, that is a complete new design because, because the amount of, if you would like to take, say, for example, would have taken our oil fill and tweaked it to get some of the features, then cost will be a uh, issue, right? You Because whoever designed the previous product tried to, you know, uh, made it more cost effective, didn't add it things that was required. But now you need that. So cost becomes an issue with the, those, uh, those boundaries that has been set for you. The other thing that happens is then you also get limited to some of the features that you can add to a product. I mean, yeah. with NV, uh, one of the reasons we completely redesigned the driver is because not only we wanted to add some of the features uh, that was requested as the initial ideation, but we also went out there and looked out where the market is going, right? So one of the things that came out is efficiency, the required for high efficient products. Yeah. Uh, then the other thing we really did completely change on this one is the castings, right? We, from typical sand castings that typically in the pump industry we could use, we moved to lost foam. What it allowed us was to hold tighter tolerance, better surface finish, 
we move to powder coating. So all those extra things get a little more difficult if you're just trying to say upgrade an existing product. Yeah. But when you redesign, that's the benefit. But I think I would call Envy a mixture of both because while we completely redesigned the driver, but we were able to use our proven hydraulics that has been there for the last 10 years and been so successful both the SH or non-clog and the chopper hydraulics. So I would say it's, this was a mixture of uh, both worlds. Yeah, I, I would have to agree on that. Um, I know that the way that the MV is being launched, the MV family is, is rolling out to the market is in different phases. Um, what was the decision behind um, those phases and having the first three phases be similar and then the E36 frame having to be a redesign. What was the thought process behind that? I think the the reason you want to break the projects in phases is because you, you know, of course, if you want to say you want to launch, say, for example, five to 200 horsepower, the time to market becomes really long. Yeah. So you want to go quickly to the market. That's where you really try to unbreak the projects into smaller size. What it does, it then allows you to put something to the market quickly. Uh-huh. And then they, they can use that by the time the, the rest of the phases go. So it's, we, we take kind of a parallel approach here, you know, like, yeah. you know, you start phase one and then that product when phase one is say at stage four you start phase two which is at stage one so it's kind of a more battle approach yeah. and that way you can get into the market quickly plus uh, you know when you do things in smaller phases it's more um, controlled right. and the learnings that you have from phase one that automatically feeds into phase two so you can quickly you know, fix if there is something that needs to be fixed. Yeah, that's a great point. How do you organize running so many phases at one time? I know we have currently four phases running for MV right now. That's uh, difficult. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I think, uh, I think the key is resource management, right? Yeah. Uh, you want to make sure when you are scoping the project, you you resource the team project uh, in a correct manner and I think then the other thing what we have employed with NV is we have we have started something called the NPD scrum technique uh, this is basically taking our existing NPD product but adding some elements of the, the scrum what has allowed us to be more flexible so, for example, you can now do something that typically we would, the typical NPD process was where is like a series, it's like a waterfall project, right? So, but now with this, say, if I have the resource and the time, I can kind of do something that I would typically do at stage five. Say you at stage five, you'll do, say, MRS, right? Yeah. You can do it at stage four if you have the resource and the time. What it does is you can really increase the speed, but then you can also use your resources or the team members because, you know, in a manufacturing environment like we are, uh, we have specialized people, right? Somebody's specialized at 3D modeling. Somebody's looking at the mechanical design. Somebody's looking at the, the thermal um, the thermal design. And some people are specialized in an analysis. So. You want to use these people in the most efficient way, and that's what it what we did with NV, and then we were able to run in multiple phases at the same time. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, I know specifically about the Scrum process in general. The overall goal is just to split up those larger tasks and in, into smaller goals, so that it breaks up such a large monumental um, task into smaller pieces. So how the Envy process has worked is we've um, broken it up by two week, we call them sprints, where you set out what you need to get done in those two weeks and you work on that that project so that it's trying to reach that overarching goal at the end. So it really helps you 
break it out into smaller steps so that you're able to get the product to market the quickest way possible. Absolutely. And, and you know, the other key thing, like, I'm glad you mentioned it is what we call the, not only we break them into smaller tasks, but we say, what is the definition of done? I mean, yeah. we literally go down to that, the last nuts and bolts, what exactly need to be done in order to call it done. It gets very defined, uh, more targeted, and you get things done in the manner you want to. Yeah, and it, it really helps just ensure that, that you're on track and that you're able to get everything um, to the finish line that you need to get done in the right order, too. That is correct, yes. Kind of shifting gears a little bit, um, what has been the most challenging part about the MV development process? Hmm, that's going to be tough. <laughs> uh, uh, I think... You know, in any new product development, right, it, it's it's always there's something called uncertainty, but that's also what it makes it so exciting. But I think if you ask me one single thing, I would say, you know, as you all, as we all know, that the majority of the initial development, especially for phase one, has happened during the pandemic. Yes. And that has uh, really limited us from doing certain things. Although we have tried our best to uh, do remote work, uh, WebEx and things to say review drawings, but there are certain things, say for example, uh, the PPAP process, right? It, it gets very difficult at times to solve some of those issues remotely. I mean, it's way more easier and quicker to just go down, meet your supplier, review what's going on, get it fixed. So those, I would say supply chain has overall has been probably the most challenging part of the project. Yeah, and do you see the pandemic having a lasting effect on supply chain or do you think that it'll um, subside here in, in the near future? I'm scared to predict because last year I thought that this year we will be in a better position, right. but I still see... Uh, effects of it. I mean, it's sporadic, uh, but I do see issues. But I would say that our team has, especially our supply chain procurement team has done a wonderful job. I mean, we wanted to make sure that we at least make it less painful for our distributors. So we have, you know, increased our inventory to really reduce that impact. But I still see it's out there. And I think it will continue to be there for the rest of the year. Hopefully Q, Q3 next year, we're starting to see some more normalization. Yeah, and I think with the manufacturing industry in general, there's always a level of unpredictability. You never know what's going to have an effect. So I think that CPNS being prepared for that unknown is really important to the, the long-term success of not only the Envy product line, but the company in general. I would say yes, and and to really um, our supply chain and ops team, I mean, both phase one, we actually launched phase one a month ahead of schedule, and then phase two, we just launched last month, again, on schedule, and we do have the parts to build and ship. So I think our supply chain team has done an exceptional job. It, it's not easy, I can tell you that, but they have done a great job. Yes, they, they definitely have, especially with all of the issues we've we've been seeing with getting parts and shortages and all of that. Yeah, exactly. What has been the most rewarding part of the MV project for you specifically? Uh, I think, uh, you know, when, when we really started the project, it was just a, 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 say a 2D concept and a piece of paper. Uh, seeing the first production unit roll out uh, was really was really uh, satisfaction just for me and my team, and it was it was a lot of pride. And I think uh, the other thing has been, I mean, something this was brought to my attention last month that in the past twelve months, I mean, we have shipped out over hundreds of units, and we have not heard any issues, major issues with this product. Uh, it tells uh, something, the robustness of our NPD program and the product. I think that's, that's a 
because it's been months of design <laughs> reviews, right, right. Uh, working with these teams. So, you know, something when you see it's out there, uh, people, you know, open the box, they say, hey, that's a good looking pump. All the people don't really uh, expect <laughs> a right. switch pump to be good looking, but we, we try to do that. We think anybody who opens um, anything new, I, I expect that you want to see something that's nice good and be proud about it. I think I would say personally that has been the most satisfying. And I think I've learned a lot through this process. I mean, every day you learn something new, a new product of love. Yeah, I would have to agree with that. I know for me, the most rewarding part of being being a, a piece of the MV team is just really getting to work with s- such a large team and having cross-functional um a cross-functional development throughout the entire process, getting to work with people that you don't necessarily always get to, um, at least from my side on, on the marketing team. Yeah, that is so true. I mean, one of the key role of any project manager is, right, it's, it's a multidisciplinary, you know, role. I mean, you have to, <clears throat> today you'll be working with engineering, tomorrow with the ops team, then you're working with marketing, supply chain. So, you get to work with all the various departments, uh, specializations, and it, it, it's a fun, fun thing. And it's really, you learn some of the things the other departments do, right? I've learned so much from marketing, right? I mean, all the things you guys do, uh, same with ops and some of the other departments. Yeah, it really gives you a, a full picture of what goes into a new product development, how so many hands are tied into it. That is true. What is your favorite feature of the Envy Pump? I think everything. <laughs> <laughs> if you had to pick uh, just one. Uh, if I put in put myself from a customer standpoint, I would say uh, maybe the plug and play. Okay. Uh, I think that's a great feature. Uh, really makes people's life easy. But from an engineering standpoint, building the product, I would say the cooling system. Okay. I think it's a, it's a very unique, simple design, but it, it's extremely efficient. Uh, so I would say that those are the two features. Could you explain the plug and play cord for those that, that don't know what that is? Yeah, sure. I mean, um, so we basically offer two designs, one which is limited to uh, 25 horsepower and below. So it's it's so when when I say plug and play, all you're doing is take you can pretty much take two M10 bolts and hook up the cord uh, for a 30 horsepower pump. But below 20 horsepower and up to 20 actually, you can even have the voltage change capability. So you've got a tri voltage pump, and just by swapping out the cord, you can change voltage at site. The other key feature is that, you know, you don't need an electrician at site to change the cord and you don't have to bring it back to to the fact. So for some reason, you want to take the pump back or change it to a different station. You don't have to take the cord along with you. You can just let it hang there and just take two bolts out, the cords off and, and you are good to go. So it's a very simple design. That's how the name you plug and play. It's extremely easy. And it's one of our, it's a patented technology we have. It's, um, it's, a, it's a great feature from our end user standpoint. Yeah, I definitely think it helps make the, the serviceability factor of all of our products that use this, this cord um, a lot easier for the end user as well as the channel partners. Yes. And the great thing is we offer this plug and play up to 150 hours, or, which, is, which is, I don't think too many people do out there today. No, they definitely don't, especially with this patented technology. It really helps um, that that serviceability factor, like I mentioned, um, for small pumps as well as large ones in general. All right, my last question for you today. What's the next step? What's the next thing for the NV family? Yeah, I mean... Just last month, we launched phase two, which was our next large frame from phase one. Right now, we have 
up to 60 horsepower these units are available uh we are finishing up phase three which is launching in november uh that is uh, a, a size a frame size smaller than the phase one so you know basically by end by november our customers will have five to 60 horsepower across four different speeds and then we are also launching our phase four which is a, a right now the largest frame uh somewhere around q2 q3 next year but in parallel we are also working on a high temp version of the product for high temperature applications and and where will you see those so, yeah. where will you see those high temp versions being needed typically i mean I believe they will be required in industrial application because most municipal applications are 40 degrees Celsius or 104 Fahrenheit. But in typical industrial application, you know, uh, you do see requirements up to uh, with 60 degrees Celsius or 80 degrees Celsius based on the type of process they're handling, wash down. Uh, laundry, then you know, chicken processing, various kinds of application. So that's where this product will be very useful. Okay, great. Are there any other things that you would think that people would like to know about MV3 or or the development process of of the product? I I think the big success for NV overall has been, I think, the time to market. Um, I mean, we have literally cut down the time to market for this product by less than half. And uh, however, increasing the number of, you know, tests, the different kinds of, you know, uh, verification or protocol testing we have conducted. I mean, just for phase one, we have conducted over 400 lines of testing. So, you know, not only we have gone to the market quickly, but, you know, making our testing even more robust uh, than we have done, say, previously. So I think that's a, a big thing that that's our commitment to our, our end users and our customers that we will continue to innovate. We will continue to make new products. Uh, based on their requirements, resolve their issues, and whatever they need to to get them going. Perfect. Well, Rohan, thank you for your time today. Uh, I really appreciate you joining us for our first Pump It Up podcast. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. We're pumped you joined us for Crane Pumps and Systems Pump It Up podcast. If you'd like to learn more about the MV3 pump family, visit mv 3 dot crane pumps dot com stay tuned for our next episode of pump it up as we close 2022 and get ready for 2023 don't miss it you'll be envious if you do